Good evening, everyone. And good evening to all those that are watching this through the live stream. It's good that we are here together to honor Blessed Francis Xavier Silos, former pastor here, and seeing him as one who brought healing to many in his life, both healing of the mind and the heart and the spirit and the body, we call upon him to intercede with us to God for all the sick and suffering, for those who work with them, not only in our area, but in our state, our country, and our world, that as we go through this pandemic together, we go through it with faith. Even though there may be fear and worry in our hearts, we go with trust, and we always go with love. So let's begin with the sign of our salvation, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. To better prepare ourselves to celebrate these mysteries, let us first ask forgiveness for our sins. Lord Jesus, you call us to have faith in your promises. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you call us to hope in always for life eternal. Christ, have mercy. Lord, you hope us hope that we always act and pray and think in love. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Father, you willed that our infirmities be borne by your only begotten Son to show the value of human suffering. Listen in kindness to our prayers for our brothers and sisters who are sick. Grant that all who are oppressed by pain, distress, or other afflictions may know that they are chosen among those proclaimed blessed and are united to Christ in his suffering for the salvation of the world. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. <clears throat> Brothers and sisters, the Spirit comes to our aid in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes with inexpressible groanings, and the one who searches hearts knows what the, in the intention of the Spirit, because he intercedes for the holy ones according to God's will. We know that all things work for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, so that he might be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called and those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. The word of the Lord. Our response is, the Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. In verdant pastures, he gives me repose. Beside restful waters, he leads me. He refreshes my soul. He guides me on right paths for his name's sake. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side with your rod and your staff that give me courage. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. 
You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd. There's nothing I shall want. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Alleluia, alleluia. My sheep hear my voice, says the Lord, and they follow me. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus exclaimed, I give praise to you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, For although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to the childlike. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. Come to me, all you who who labor and are burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and humble of heart, and you will find rest for yourselves. For my yoke is easy and my burden light. The Gospel of the Lord. It's good we come to the Lord. He says, those who labor and are are burdened or heavy burdened, because many of us, and Lord knows many in our community, our nation, our world, are heavy burdened with this pandemic. Heavy burdened with not only the financial distress, but the fear of the virus, of loved ones getting sick and dying. And we, We've had so many in this country die, but so many thousands and hundreds of thousands more in India and Pakistan and China and all the nations of the world have been struck by this. So many people are are heavy burdened. Many people are worried. Many people live in fear. Many people live in doubt. Where is God? And it's with this in mind that we have this mass of healing because healing can come in many forms. Sure, at times, there's a physical healing, a manifestation, as would happen in the life of, life of Blessed Silos. But there's so many other levels of healing because there's so many levels of pain and hurt, both mentally and physically, emotionally, spiritually, that need healing. And we found out through this pandemic how weak we really are and sometimes how strong we are. And we find that many of our neighbors and friends are struggling with relationships, being so close with each other for so long, problems have arisen that have been dormant for years. Marriage counselors, divorce lawyers, unfortunately, are just burgeoning with people who want out because they discovered something of themselves or their spouse during this or their family. And so there's a great deal of strain on all relationships, just children and parents and parents and children, us friars, you all who live single or with family, there's a strain in relationship. And there can be a strain also in our trust. Trust of God. Where are you, God? Why isn't this over? We prayed a novena, and it's still here. Where are you, God, in the midst of this? And he says, I'm with you. 
a matricide, and I'm wearing a mask too. And I use hand sanitizer. But I'm going to be with you through this. Is that enough for us to have God go through this with us and not make it go away? He said, I'll be with you always till the ends of the earth, the end of the age. He's with us in our struggles, financial struggles that many people are encountering of employment, of security of their future. He's with us through that. He's with us when we doubt him and say, well, where are you? Why aren't you doing something? He's with us through that. He's with us when we can appreciate for a moment maybe the beauty of nature around us as the leaves start turning, the sunsets earlier in the cool evenings, and we feel that invigoration of fall and the harvest of fruits. So those brief moments we're rejoicing in the Lord. He doesn't want us to lose sight of the beauty that's all around us, to see what we're going through within the greater perspective of the kingdom of God. Now that won't make any of you maybe feel better or get healed or anybody's relationship suddenly mend, but to know that God's with us through this. Don't you hate when you have to go through something alone? You've gone through a problem and nobody knows about it, and you're, you have it all inside yourself. And you wish you could share it with somebody, and you can't. Or you have pain, and you want to tell somebody. That feeling of being alone and having no one to talk to, no one to listen, that's a great fear we have and a great pain. And the Lord's saying, I'm at your side, I'm with you. I was with you before the pandemic, during the pandemic, and after the pandemic. Many people found many things to complain about, rightfully so, and many things to be angry about through this pandemic, but also many people found out new things about themselves. You have a strength you had that you didn't know, or a peace that you had even amidst all this, an insight you got about yourself or someone else. Many people are discovering all kinds of things about themselves and the Lord and our world through this. He didn't cause this, but he can use this for a greater cause. And the cause is to get us all to the kingdom of heaven. That's what Silos always prayed for his students and his parishioners to become a saint. That's our role on earth. And this is part of our role of becoming saints. And if you've ever read any of the lives of any of the saints, there wasn't one who didn't suffer a lot in many different ways. So this is part, God is using this to help us become holier and healthier and more joyful. Not happy, joyful. Joy comes from the security of knowing we're God's child and we want to spend heaven with him forever. That's joy. And that trust of knowing, not knowing why this is or how it's going to end or how soon it will be complete, but the trust that the Lord's with us. It's, it's a hard thing to preach, but yet we know he's with us. He's not given up on us. In fact, he's at our side pulling. You know, the whole image of yoke, he says, come to me all you who are burdened and labor and I'll give you rest. I'll give you my yoke. Wait. I already have too big of a yoke, Lord. No, no, no. You're pulling it all by yourself. Yoke means two. He said, I'll be on this side. Y'all be on that side. We'll pull together. And if you think you're pulling yourself day by day through this, dude, you're wrong. Because if it weren't for me, <laughs> if it weren't for him, where would we be? He's been pulling with us all along, but we haven't always recognized that. And at times we tend to think it's all on our shoulders to figure out whether politics or race or religion or faith or whatever. But he's saying, I'm at your side pulling with you. I'm suffering with you. I'm praying for you. I died for you and I rose for you. This is only one chapter in our lives. And look back on your past. Please look back on your past. How many times has God come through for you. Remember those problems you had you thought were so great? Oh my gosh, I'm never going to be able to make it. Hey, you're here. Remember how many people 
have lost babies and you have healthy children. Some of you lost children, but remember all those financial problems you worried about? Well, you don't look too shabby tonight. You see, he, God's seen us so, through so much and we have this amnesia, forgetting how faithful he's been to us even when we were sinners, especially when we were sinners, how he called us back to his grace and forgiveness. He's been with us all along, pulling at our side. He got us through so many situations, and this is just one more way of his proving his faithfulness. Blessed Silos had great faith. We'll talk about him a little bit after communion. He had great faith in God and the Word of God and the sacraments, and he tried to imbue that into his students and to his parishioners. But he did that by living it. A man who was prayerful, who was faithful, who had a zeal for souls, who had a love of the Blessed Mother, who enjoyed having people learn about God and their minds and hearts and souls open up. We're called to live that as well in our own way and to be witnesses to God's faithfulness and to be maybe less grumpy and more hopeful, less complaining and more praising, more thankful for the blessings we've had and that we're having right now and we're going to continue to have in the future. God's not far away. He's never been. He's always been at our side pulling with us. He just wants us to look over and say, thanks for being here. Will you please help me keep pulling? Let us now offer our universal prayers of intention for the faithful. We pray for our Holy Father, our bishops, for all religious leaders. They will continue to stay attuned to the Holy Spirit and lead us to greater holiness and faithfulness. We pray to the Lord. We pray for our, all of our government leaders and world leaders, for those who serve us in public office, that they, they too will be attuned to the Holy Spirit in making just laws and seeking always the way of peace, especially for the most vulnerable in our society, we pray, we pray to the Lord. We pray for all those individuals who are suffering from the virus and those who are sick in any way, in body, mind, or spirit, that God will continue to give them courage and hope. They give them healing and peace. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all those in the medical field who are serving the sick, the scientists looking for a vaccine, for all those who are striving to keep us healthy and safe, that God will continue to give them strength in their, in their pursuit of holy, health and holiness. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all those who have died because of the virus and their families who aren't able to properly mourn their loss we ask that you give them strength to get through each day. We pray to the Lord. And for all those who are suffering because of this pandemic, in their relationships, in their finances, in their bodies, in their minds, in their spirits, that God will continue to give them hope and healing and strength. We pray to the Lord. And for all those intentions given to us, in our book of intentions, and for all those personal intentions that we mention now in the silence of our hearts. For these we pray to the Lord. 
Father, we thank you for sending Jesus as our yoke mate. We ask that we may continue to be faithful to you, and we rely upon you to hear these prayers through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Amen. Lord, accept the sacrifice. Heavenly Father, since the moments of our life unfold according to your good pleasure, receive the prayers and the sacrificial offerings by which we implore your mercy for our brothers and sisters who are ill, that having been anxious for them in their danger, may we, we may rejoice at their recovery of health through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Holy Father, Lord of heaven and earth, through Christ our Lord. For by your word you created the world, and you govern all things in harmony. You give us the same word made flesh as mediator, and he has spoken your words to us and called us to follow him. He is the way that leads to you, the truth that sets us free, the life that fills us with gladness. Through your Son, you gather men and women whom you made for the glory of your name into one family, redeemed by the blood of Christ and signed with the seal of the Spirit. Therefore, now for ages unending, with all the angels and saints in heaven, we proclaim your glory as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord. God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he O God, you are indeed holy and to be glorified. You love the human race and always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst, when we are gathered by his love. As once for his disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, 
the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith when we Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again and offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us. Grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Lord, bring your church to perfect faith and charity, together with Francis our Pope and William our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and the entire people you have made your own. Open our eyes to the needs of our brothers and sisters. Inspire us in words and actions to comfort those who labor and are burdened. Make us serve them truly after the example of Christ and at his command. And may your church stand as a living witness to truth and freedom, to peace and justice, that all people may be raised up to a new hope. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. And grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place <clears throat> and live with you forever there in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Joseph, her spouse, the apostles, the martyrs, Blessed Silos, and all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. <clears throat> through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. <clears throat> Jesus taught us to call God our Father, so now we have the courage to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. <clears throat> and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who pass against us. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we always may be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but upon the faith of your church. Grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let's offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, <clears throat> I 
The prayer the priest says now could be something that all of us could pray. It says, Lord Jesus Christ, may the receiving of your body and blood not bring me to judgment or condemnation, but through your loving mercy be for me protection in mind and body and a healing remedy. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not. For Holy Communion, um, perhaps we would do best to do one side at a time. I'm going to first deal with the folks in the first pew here, but perhaps this side could be come forward, keeping your distance, and I'll basically drop the, ho the sacred host into your hand, and you can step aside and consume it. And we won't be giving out communion from the cup or on the tongue is for the whole purpose of it being healthy and safe. Table. Put, this, put the table right in the middle.
you know, technically, Francis Xavier Silos died yesterday on the 4th. But it's also St. Francis Day, and he was a saint long before Silos, so I guess he got a bump to the 5th instead of the 4th. But you know, I think Father Silos loves that. He never wanted to be in the limelight. He never wanted to be a show-off or attract attention to himself. And yet, he attracted so many people to the Lord through his personality. He, he was a, a devout young man. He was gifted in many ways by God with a great intellect and memory and a great desire and devotion in his heart to love God and the Blessed Mother. And so he was called to be a redemptorist. And he so desired to be a missionary. And guess whose mission country he came to? Ours. Because there are so many German immigrants and others here that had not enough priests. So he was excited about spending his life as a missionary here and wherever his superiors would send him. And he came with great fervor and zeal. I mean, he lived with St. John Neumann, so I mean, you live with a saint, it kind of rubs off on you. And he was in Pittsburgh with him, and then uh, Annapolis, Baltimore, and followed him after, after Neumann was paris, pastor here, followed, he was, I think, the sixth pastor. So he, walking in some big footsteps, but he was so glad that he had the the opportunity to be with John Newman so much. He said he learned so much about spirituality, about spiritual direction, about counsel from him, just by being with him. Well, he had this unfortunate accident where he had a blood vessel break in his throat and he, he wasn't able to talk. So they said, well, I know. Why don't we send you to Cumberland to rest? We'll make you guardian of the community Novice master and pastor. That should be a good rest for you. Can you imagine? Three jobs. Each of those is totally consuming in itself, and yet he took them all on. And with great aplomb and great uh, ease, not grumbling or complaining, but finding ways of doing all he had to do. And he especially had a love for his students. He wanted these students to be good priests, good religious. And he spent a lot of his time here at the novitiate what was there, um, in that building, training them up in prayer, in discerning God's will for them, and especially in obedience. He said, when you give yourself to obedience, God speaks to your superiors, so you don't have to constantly be riled up and wondering about things. You'll be told what to do, and that's obeying God. So he had a very simple view of it, which many people don't have, and he, was, he proved it by the way he acted himself, that he was obedient. He loved his students, and he loved his parish. Now, i, I got to confess, this is the truth. In the years he was here, there were like a gazillion baptisms, and of course, a gazillion funerals. He only did about 13 of them, because he knew how to delegate, because he had to be three different administrators at once. But he loved preaching here and doing Mass, and he loved, 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 loved having Mass done right with all the pomp and the elegance of the old days, remember? With all the smells and bells and candles and all the processions. He loved it being done perfectly to a T. He just believed that was where our way of participating in the heavenly, not banquet, but in the heavenly worship. That's how we touch close to heaven, by our worship on earth. Now there's one story, well, he, midnight mass he found to be very difficult at Christmas because a lot of unsavory people would come to church and they weren't fully with it, if you know what I mean. So he decided to have midnight mass at two o'clock in the morning. I guess that's when the bars closed then too, I don't know. But anyway, two o'clock in the morning because he wanted to make sure it was a properly worshiped mass. But when he had 40 hours here, this is the one that really amazed me, he had all of his students, 60 of them, sing the office at midnight and it went till two in the morning. And then when the bishop came to 
dedicate formally again this church after its additions, that lasted like three and a half to four hours. But he loved it. He thought it was great because he just was that whole time giving praise to God. And he saw that as our way of participating in, in the life of heaven. He counseled a lot of people. You know, he was a prolific letter writer. And people can't believe with all the work he had to do, he'd be into the wee hours of the morning writing letters to his spiritual children, to his family, but many to people who wrote to him for counsel and advice, people who, who wanted direction in their lives. So he wrote hundreds and hundreds of letters, a few of which are left, well, a hundred some maybe, or more, but he wrote so many letters because that's his way of communicating. He didn't have text or email or FaceTime, so he had to use the, the way of the times and writing by hand letters to his spiritual children. And he was a willing servant who, from Annapolis to here, well, Pittsburgh first, and Annapolis here, he kept being moved at appropriate times, but his heart was always in the missions, in giving parish missions. And his parish missions last two weeks, where they would go in, he would go in, maybe with a companion, and they would just hear confessions, give talks to all the different levels of people, children, adults, singles, marrieds, and he loved sharing the Word of God, and he loved what he really loved. The Sunday afternoon, he would fill this place, fill it, with people who wanted to learn catechism. These were Catholics like y'all, coming on a Sunday afternoon for an hour and a half or more, and he was able to explain the faith clearly, simply, directly. He loved doing that. He loved seeing people's hearts and minds click with knowledge of the Lord, and the great desire to, to pray more, to be close to God. It's amazing, it's almost ironic, when he moved to New Orleans, where his, uh, his uh, national shrine is located, they had the yellow fever going on. And like so many priests of his day, he ministered to them directly, which ended up giving him the yellow fever and him dying at the age of 48. Can you imagine comp accomplishing all that before you were 48? And he left a legacy behind of holiness. You know his pictures, he looks a little gaunt and kind of pale. Well, that's how he looked. He was a skinny, gaunt guy, but also he did a lot of fasting and mortification. So he didn't really beef up much because he was busy using his penance and mortification to grow in a deeper love of God. But he had something about him, his smile, his look. He had a great sense of humor, too. But people were just attracted to him. And were attracted, I would say, in the Lord through him. See, when Silos did, when people had dire need, they were like on their deathbed, or the doctor said there's no more help for them, medicine can't do anymore, they're not long to live. And Silos would come with the sacraments, give them the anointing, Holy Communion, <coughs> and eventually they recovered. Well, he never saw this as him. He saw this as God working through his sacrament. But the people kind of thought after a while, he had a sort of a track record of all these healings, of he being there for people in their need and being an instrument of God's healing for that person. Now, I don't know if you know it, but he had one miracle. That's why he's blessed. He needs another verified miracle to make him a saint. And maybe that miracle is here in Cumberland. Now, if you're going to, if you have a special need, like someone that's really sick or some situation that's impossible, tell a friend or two. You can't just do it yourself. And do a novena to him. Because if you just do this on your own, who's going to believe you? But two or three of you, you know. And if you have this prayer and truly pray, who knows? His miracle to become a saint could be right here. Why not? He's a place he loves so much. He loved being here in Cumberland with the air and the mountains and the people, he said, and his students. So let's continue to ask him to pray for us during this pandemic, especially for those people that are being stricken by the virus and those who have to care for them. And let's pray that he will intercede 
to give us faith in God's promises, hope in the fulfillment of those promises, and love as we go through this. So that as we go through this with our yoke mate Jesus, we do so as he did, with a great desire and love of God, loving of the Blessed Mother, and faithfulness to the church, and most of all, in sharing Jesus with others. That's how we'll get through this pandemic. Let us pray. O oh God, you are the only support of our human weakness. Show the power of your protection over your servants who are sick, that sustained by your merciful help, they may be restored to your holy church in good health through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now I have a prayer of healing for you all and for our parish and our country and our world. Heavenly Father, we know that you are creator. Lord Jesus Christ, we know that you have redeemed us, risen from the dead to take us to heaven. Holy Spirit, you are the inspiration in our hearts and minds. We ask that you send the healing power of your spirit upon our city, our church, our nation, and our world, that you may restore those that are broken, that you may heal those that are sick, that you may give courage to the faint-hearted, that you may give faith to those who are doubting, hope to those who are fearful, and love to those who are discouraged. We ask that you give us the healings we need most, healing in our mind, of our thoughts, of our emotions, feelings, of our spirit, of our soul, and of our heart. Mend us, Lord, from the inside out, so that we may give you greater praise and service, and may be willing to live out the Beatitudes in our lives, being able to serve those all around us, and to show the love that you have placed in our hearts, that it may be manifested to the world. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord.